Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert, back with another look at some more gear from NAMM 2020. This piece was actually announced at NAMM 2019, but it's taken a little while to filter its way through. This is the new Audio Fuse Studio. We've already taken a look at the Audio Fuse, the original two channel version. We've had a play with the Audio Fuse 8 Pre, the 8 Pre version, which is rack mounted. And we now have this four channel variant. This is a very lovely, very well put together desktop mounted unit, desk or desk, who knows. Um, so we're going to have a look up close and personal. Then, of course, as always, there's a track. There's always a track. It's the law. Fairly simple thing this time. Some acoustic instruments, percussion. I've even dug the mandolin out for this one. So a really nice broad range of sounds. Now, although there has been some delay getting the AudioFuse Studio to market, that time delay has not been wasted. They've been able to take newer chips, newer chipsets, and whack them in here, so you're actually getting better A to D conversion, which is really nice. That, along with the whole bundled software package, which we'll talk about shortly, this is a very, very cool thing. So let's get up close and personal on the AudioFuse Studio. So we're going to start around the very, very front panel with our four main inputs. These are XLR jack combination inputs. I can put an XLR in there and the mic indicator lights up, or I can put a jack in there and I can go between line level input and a high impedance instrument input, which is very nice. I also have two independently configured headphone outputs on both quarter inch and eighth inch jacks, which is really nice. No more scrabbling around trying to find those damn converters. So moving around to the top of the unit now, you can see we have our four main input channels. If I have a mic connection plugged in, I can switch phantom power on and off. We have a pad and phase invert. If I have a quarter inch jack plugged in, I can switch between line and instrument input. Again, a pad, phase invert, but of course, no phantom power. We then have the main gain pot for each channel and a listen or solo button. Moving over to the right hand side of the unit, we have the main volume pot with nice LED meters giving me an idea of what's coming back from my DAW. Dim, mute, and mono. We then have speaker selection, so we have two sets of speaker outputs. We can then choose to listen to the main output, Q1 or Q2. And down here we have our two headphone controls. So again, we can mono up the headphones if we want to, and I can choose Q1, Q2, or the main output, and the volume control. Now above that main volume pot, we can see exactly how the unit is being clocked internally via ADAT, via SPDIF, via word clock or via USB. Next to this, we have the Bluetooth button. Now what this means is if you wanna stream audio from your phone or your iPad or a tablet with Bluetooth, you can stream it straight into the AudioFuse Studio on two of the channels, which is really, really nice. You don't have to worry about finding one of those awkward mini jacks or anything like that. It's also very handy if you're using any of the range of iOS or Android instruments. Most people's phones now have a drum kind of pattern programmer on them or some kind of crazy synth. No need to dig around for one of those tiny mini jack cables. Just hit the Bluetooth button, pair it with your device and away you go. Very, very nice indeed. Now Arturia have never been ones with their interfaces to scrimp and scrape on connectivity and IO. And the AudioFuse Studio is definitely no slouch when it comes to getting signals in and out. Starting on the back left, we have the main power button, the Kensington lock port, and the power input from a DC external power supply. It's a USB-C device, so we have the USB-C I.O. port. And above that, we have two mini jacks. Now, these mini jacks are actually the MIDI inputs. Even though MIDI is usually transmitted over a five-pin DIN plug, it actually only uses three of the pins. So what Arturia have done is taken the mini jack format, and converted it to a MIDI DIN plug, which is very nice. This means you use a lot less rear panel real estate to give yourself MIDI I.O., because obviously mini jacks are significantly smaller than five pin DINs. One of my favorite features of the AudioFuse Studio and the original AudioFuse was the inclusion of a USB hub. It's a very, very useful feature. Certainly on the new MacBook Pros or any of the new machines that have USB-C, 
where do you put your iLock? Well, the answer is, if you're using an AudioFuse Studio or AudioFuse, you put it in the included USB hub. This can also be very handy if you're using external MIDI controllers or external synths that can be hooked up via USB. As we move across along the top, we have the word clock stroke SPDIF IO. Now SPDIF is a stereo digital format and word clock is clocking. It's unusual to see them sharing the same port, but totally legitimate, it can be done. Below that, we have the two pairs of speaker outputs, set A and B. We have the auxiliary outputs, which double up as reamp outputs for reamping DI guitar signals to a real amp. We have four inserts, proper TRS inserts, one for each of the input channels, meaning we can use external hardware like EQs and dynamics and process to disk if you like. We then have four line level inputs, giving us eight analog inputs and a pair of phonos for using decks. We also have a ground port for this. Along the top, we have two pairs of ADA optical ports, meaning that's another 16 channels of input via ADA optical. These can also be configured as SPDIF optical. So once again, the team at Arturia have squeezed an awful lot of IO into a unit the size of, well, a couple of cigar boxes, really. Very, very cool piece of kit. It's built good and solid. All the pots feel really nice. It's got a very positive feel about it. It just... It just feels really, really nice. It's a very nice piece of kit to use, and it's very, very simple. Now, one of the things that makes it really easy to use is the AudioFuse Control Center software. This is the software nerve center of the AudioFuse. You can see along the top, we can get to all of the I.O. We can see what's going on with the Bluetooth I.O., the SPDIF, the ADAP. We then have our monitoring section. We have two different Q outputs. Q1 and Q2 for configuring completely different headphone mixes if we desire that. So if you have two people recording at the same time, it's really handy. You don't have to just go off the DAW mix. We have the DAW input. This is our kind of virtual return channel, if you like, and a master. And we can see what's going on with the analog outputs. Now on this track, I'm using the Arturia Rev Plate 140, which is one of the plugins that's included in the AudioFuse Creative Suite. The plug-in bundle that accompanies AudioFuse. Very, very cool, full featured. There's everything in there, EQs, compressors, reverbs, everything you need to get up and running. It's all really good stuff. Many of these we've reviewed before. And of course, I will include the links in the main article to those previous reviews. So there you have it. That's the AudioFuse Studio by Arturia. A very chunky, very solid, competitively priced, beautifully featured. I mean, they really have machine gunned the I.O. onto this thing. They're doing a really good job of breaking the mold when it comes to what's expected and the norm on kind of small form factor portable audio interfaces. And that, of course, has to be commended. So it's time for the track. I hope you enjoy it. My name's James Ivy, and I'll see you again very soon for some more Gear Talk. Playing games in the park. Okay.